Next piece in line is the slide cap. This is the rail that traps the crosshead and keeps it pinched down uh, freely against the frame. Two through holes on the end, no big deal. There is a 256 threaded section in the center. This is where one of those little oil cups goes. And the crosshead just simply slides back and forth beneath this. This is how the parts come in the kit. They are connected with a horseshoe. I'm going to try not to destroy that horseshoe. I might need it for something. Who knows? What I do plan to do is I'm not going to machine the bottom of these. I'm going to rub these on a piece of emery on a known flat piece of uh, cast iron, like a surface plate, edge, my little bandsaw table, whatever I can find that's going to keep these flat. And then I'm going to take a minimal, minimal dust cut on the side pressed in the mill vise. And since we have casting draft on it, it shouldn't take much to clean up just a absolute minimum amount on that so I can squeeze it this way in the vise and do these features. I do not want to squeeze on this part if it's not parallel and that is the only reason for the cleanup cuts on the side. There are spot faces on the end so that the screws sit still and there is a minimal 1 32nd diameter through the center so the oil doesn't pour out once you fill the cup. And that's about it. This is a relatively simple straightforward part. Shouldn't take very long to do. There will not be much more narrative than what I've just done. So that's how we're going to do it. Saw it off. Sand it flat. Look for it to ring, rock, whatever. Sit it on some parallels. Clean the edges. Both sides. Minimal. Absolutely minimal. And then hand file or sand the edges up here to match that boss. Here we go. Let's do it. Alright, after a couple of minutes of swiping these across 150 and then 220 emery, got a nice flat bottom. Any doubt on how flat the bottom is, pack them together and block the light out and try to look through them. If no light's coming through the crack, you know you probably got them pretty flat. If they don't rock or spin on the surface plate, it's a win. I filed, I filed with the original draft of the casting to keep the look on both ends. Now we break the edge off of this ever so slightly, flip it over and break the edge off on the other side for parallel, and then simply drill and spot face the holes. That's next. Nice material. Gummy, but tough at the same time. Kind of an unusual combination. Clean up on these will not clean up the entire side. Uh, it's not intended to clean up the entire side. I am strictly going after the very back edge. This could almost be done with a file, but I want to make sure the sides are parallel for the next op. So this is going to be very minimal. Should be very quick. No need to clean them up unless you want to. We'll get a better look at those on the bench when I'm done with them. But literally, this is just a couple thousands coming off of there, just enough almost to deburr them. I 
when this part is installed on the steam engine frame, it sits on quarter inch diameter standoffs on either end and that creates the gap where the crosshead slides underneath. So in order to get the hole to come perfectly centered to the end and not be influenced by the draft, I'm going to machine this part. I'm going to pop the through holes in on the ends with the part inverted. I'm going to show you a little trick on how to set that up. Lower the part down into the vise. Gently lift against the existing parallel. Close the vise. We are right where we need to be. Pin in the drill chuck just above the part. Find the end of your part so it visually looks lined up. Zero it out. Do the exact same thing to the other side. Record the number. Split the difference. That is now the center of your part. Take the overall length of the bolt pattern. Split that in half. Drill your holes. Converting a part like that works extremely well. It works very well on parts that are sometimes hard to access. That particular inverted alignment drilling operation puts you right where you want to be. Both of them. Now for the remainder of the holes and remainder of the operations I will hold it this way. Visually center it up on the boss for the oiler cup and then spot face the two ends and you can call this part done. Make sure that you wipe it back across the emery when you are done drilling the holes because this material will crown when you drill it. And deburr it as you go. Let's flip it back over, get some pins. I'm going to use a pin in the drill chuck to line up this hole to come down from my zero and spot face from there. All right, now the next sequence of events here can be avoided if you do everything from one side, but for sake of cosmetics, I decided to do the initial through hole from the bottom. So I'm going to use a 140 diameter pin in my drill chuck to pick up the existing hole and then I know what it is center to center for the spot faces that they require. Once you have your location, put your 730 seconds or 218 diameter end mill in your machine and spot face both end bosses just to clean up. This is just the seat for the screw head. And I would have to imagine if you don't have a 730 seconds end mill, a quarter inch end mill at this point would be just fine. Anything to clean these bosses up, just nothing under 200, which is the size of the screw head. I'm going to take my own advice and size up to a quarter inch for this. Any irregularities in the casting are going to show up like a sore thumb here and I would rather not have any 
irregularities right here. This is a top side component, it's going to be very visible. Let's go bigger. Quarter inch. Do the exact same thing to the other part. And we'll get to the oil gland in the center momentarily. Once you have the two bosses on the end spot faced off and you have your location center to center, you can either split the difference or go back to your zero point depending on which way you shifted your x-axis table. Put a pin back in your drill chuck and visually align to the center boss on the casting. If all went well, the zero, zero for the two spot faces you just did should also be the zero, zero for the center of this particular part. This is another strong argument for cleaning up the sides of these castings before you start working on them. Drill and tap the center to print seen it done a million times. This is just how I'm lining it up. I probably won't film that, but I'm going to assemble this when I'm done just to check it. It's no fun if you can't play with your toys as you make them, right? Stick around. I'm going to make some slight changes to this. And although I'm not a big fan of doing this, when it's a light cut, I will do it. One eighth end mill in the drill chuck, spot face for a flat surface. I do not have a 130 second drill, I'm going through with an 040. Contrary to what the print says, I am going 250 deep with the tap drill. There's plenty of room to do this. Bring the drill down till the body diameter meets the top part of the part. Lock the spindle, set my stop, and move the table up 250. Drill accordingly. Change over to a spring-loaded tap guide. Make sure you record your settings for the hole or set your digital to zero. Spring-loaded tap guide. Ever so gently get this thing started. You'll feel it when it starts to cut. Do not use a large tap handle for a tiny tap. You lose all feel and risk snapping the tap off. Just don't do it. Don't use a T-handle if it's not a precision T-handle. Not a good idea either. I am watching the extension of the tap guide as a depth indicator. If you run the tap guide when it seats all the way up, as it comes out, you can get a pretty good feel for how deep you're going. Knowing that this tap is going to bottom in this hole, I'll run the tap in until I start feeling resistance, and I'll finish it outside the vise, so I can feel both pieces. When I take the tap out of the part, 
I will invert the entire setup so the tap is facing the ground and I will spin it with my fingers. That way the weight of the tap when it breaks free has no chance of damaging the lead thread. Let's take a look at the final product. And you can see when I said I cleaned the sides up, I cleaned them up minimal. That's exactly what I meant. Absolutely minimal. These do sit on 250 diameter standoffs, so if you wanted to cut these down to 250 wide, you probably would be okay doing that. An exceptionally small hole through the center. That is just under one millimeter diameter. If this thing drips too much on your model, set a small ball bearing on that hole and give it a tap with a hammer. Or use a center punch with a nice tip on it and give it a smack. It will close the hole down. You can come do that from either side. 256 hole through the center. Spot face on the top. Two pieces. I did hit the ends on a scotch Bray wheel just to scuff them up a little bit. Now I'm looking forward to putting these on the frame, putting some well cups on them, putting some screws in them, and uh, let's see how they perform. Looking forward to seeing that. Stick around. Well, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't looking forward to this. I'm going to take a couple of these little standoffs that it, these rails ride on. Here is the cross head slide. I guess the easiest way to do this is one end at a time. Sorry about the noise in the background. That is my alignment pin inventory being restocked. If you're not familiar with those, check those out. On the website and in the videos. Bunch of them. And that is a thing of beauty. I'm good digging that. Just beautiful. Love it. Thing of beauty is a joy forever. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh my god. Loving it. Loving it. Beauty. Love it. And everybody that's going to leave a comment about using hex head bolts or nuts and studs, you are absolutely right. These screws really undermine the authenticity of the way this thing looks. 
But you can see what the little holes are for in the arms. Cup fills up with oil, sits there as it crosshead slide rolls back and forth, drips down onto the casting underneath it, and as it passes under, it drips down on the top as well. So it keeps it fairly well lubricated. I am thrilled. That is just beautiful. Love it. Well, it's like silk. Beautiful. Well, that is the first sub-assembly that I've assembled with this model, and I thank you for hanging in there and watching. I'm really enjoying this, and thank you for all the great comments and Patreon support. Stay well. Joe Pye from Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.